Today we're going to learn how to draw a loggerhead turtle. The loggerhead turtle is an endangered species that lives in the Gulf of Mexico and lays its eggs on Alabama beaches. When the babies hatch, they are only about two inches long and they have to make their way all the way back into the water. As they grow older, they may be three feet long and around 300 pounds. They often live to be about 50 years old. In the ocean, they have a lot of things that they have to look out for. They may become trapped in fishing nets. And another big threat is plastic. Turtles mistake things like plastic bags or balloons for jellyfish. We all have to do our part to try to keep these turtles safe. Let's learn how to draw a loggerhead sea turtle. I am going to start with my turtle's shell. Now the sea turtle, the loggerhead turtle, um, it's sort of wider and then comes to a point. Ours is gonna be swimming like you're seeing him from the side. So I'm going to start with kind of a rainbow shape across my page. I'm gonna draw on a crayon. You can use a pencil. So I'm gonna start with that first line and I'm gonna have it kind of come about this way. Now, we're gonna leave room here for our turtle's head. All right, now our second line is gonna be from the shell where it kind of comes to a point and back around this way, but I'm not gonna make them connect because we're leaving room over there. All right, now, I'm making mine about the size of my hand. You may want to make a curved line connecting these two points. It almost looks like a light bulb right now. Now the loggerhead has a big head. Um, the loggerhead also has a really strong jaw and can eat things even like crabs and shellfish can get through those shells with the strong jaw that the loggerhead has. So we have a kind of big head. Um, if your shell is about the size of your hand, then I would say the head is about the length of your thumb. And you could make your head looking up or looking down. I'm gonna make mine kind of straight across. So I'm gonna go, let's see, that's about the length of my thumb. That's about right. And then I'm gonna have it curve down a little bit. This is gonna make up the top part of your turtle's head. Now the loggerhead has a really strong jaw and it has kind of an overbite where the top jaw goes a little bit further out past the lower jaw. So I'm gonna draw the loggerhead's mouth. It only needs to go back about this far. And if you would rather yours look like it's smiling or something else, you can do that. I'm just gonna do mine more or less straight across. Underneath, you're gonna do the loggerhead's lower jaw Make sure I connect those really well. And it's not as big as the top jaw. And we're gonna connect it back in. Now we're gonna go toward the shell, but not meeting with the shell because some of the loggerhead turtle's body um, comes below where the shell is. So I'm gonna go to about right here, and then I'm gonna stop. Now let's go ahead and put our turtle's eye in place. Um, you could just do a circle. They're really shaped almost like human eyes, kind of more of a football shape, um, but they sort of slant. The eye is about right here. It's not back here or up here. It's right about there. Um, so I'm gonna do sort of a football shape for my eye. And you can put that center circle in there. If you want to add the pupil and all the smaller details, you can. I'm kind of using a fat crayon, so I may stop right there with my details. Now turtles, sea turtles, instead of having little legs that just come out here, they have to be able to swim. So we're going to do more of a flipper or fin style arm. So from here, you're going to make a curved line, goes out and then you're gonna curve it back in. But you're not gonna quite meet that body because you're gonna leave a little bit of, or you're not gonna meet, meet the shell because you're gonna leave some room here for that turtle body that hangs down at the bottom. Now you're gonna have a top fin also. This is the one that's gonna be closest to you and things that are closer to you look bigger. Um, so your 
top fin, the one that's a little farther away from you, may look a little bit smaller than the fin that's closest to you. So from here, kind of think about where you want to put it, but you can put that curved line here and then bring it right back around. And so it meets, and this one you're seeing it sort of behind the shell, so you're not seeing where it connects to the softer part of the turtle's body and skin. So it kind of looks like it's right there connecting with the shell. All right, so we talked about how a little bit of the turtle's body can be seen on the side. They actually have another shell that's on the bottom. Um, from this angle, we wouldn't be seeing it because we're looking more at the top and the side of the shell. So I'm gonna connect the body in and it's just going to taper back in so that it meets that shell. All right, so now we're going to put in our little back legs and flippers. And they're smaller, shorter than the front ones. So we're going to have kind of a curved line here. And just bring it right back that way. Almost looks like a little bean shape or a fortune cookie or something. And on the other side, if you want to show one that's a little bit smaller, because it's a little bit farther away from your eye, you can do it a little bit smaller in the back. Now, at this point, um, if you're drawing with a pencil, you may want to pause the video long enough and outline your turtle with a crayon if you have one. Um, you could also use a Sharpie or a permanent marker if you would rather, but I think a crayon will work really well. We're going to do a watercolor resist, which just means we're going to use crayon first. The crayon is made with wax, and when you paint on top of the crayon with watercolor or our homemade watercolor, um, it will resist the wax. So you'll end up seeing your wax crayon and your watercolor on top of it. Um, so if you have not already, go ahead and pause the video. Outline all of this in crayon so that once you start painting, it won't wash your turtle away. You wanna still be able to see it once you're finished. All right, so now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the texture of the turtle. Um, the turtle shell has a pattern on it that's really beautiful, um, but our turtle skin also has kind of a pattern and it's sort of a bumpy looking pattern. And so I was thinking about things that might give us that texture. Now, if you want to, you can use your crayon and just sort of draw a little bumpy texture on your turtle. And that would be totally fine. Another way to get that texture is to kind of look around your home and do a texture scavenger hunt. So here's one that I did. Um, I found that I had this mesh, it's kind of like a ribbon. And I found that if I put my ribbon under my paper, let me get another paper. and then I put my crayon flat on top of it, I peel part of it off, that when I rub it, I get that nice bumpy texture from that. Um, I also looked around and saw that if I were to go to my driveway, I get this kind of cool bumpy texture when I put a piece of paper down on it and rub my crayon. I also have a rug where I put my paper down and rubbed it and got another texture. The one that I liked the best was this frame. So I took a frame and I put my paper on top of it and I rubbed and I got this cool bumpy texture. So I'm going to use that for the texture of my turtle. So I'm going to place this frame underneath the parts of the turtle that are bumpy and that would be kind of your flippers or your fins front and back, and maybe a little bit on the face. So I'm gonna make sure I have this lined up with the bumpy texture of whatever it is that you're using. And I'm just going to kind of rub just on the parts that I want to have that texture. All right, and I'm, it's gonna be a little bit smoother under here, so I'm not gonna rub that part. But up here, I want more bumps. So I'm gonna rub here. And it works that I just peeled part of my crayon because that means I'm not having to figure out which parts go on the turtle and which parts don't. So that's kind of a nice bumpy texture there. Some more bumps on those back legs. And I'm gonna do a little bit on the head too. And 
and doesn't have to be quite as much. So that's our texture for our turtle skin. And again, if you would rather, you can draw just little small kind of irregular circles to show that those have texture. All right, let's move on to our turtle shell. Um, around the outside part of the shell is where you're gonna have sort of smaller shapes. These are more organic shapes. They are not geometric. They're not perfect rectangles or squares or circles, um, but they're smaller around this edge that you see of this outside edge. So I'm gonna use my crayon and start coloring in some of those shapes. until I have something that goes all the way across this bottom edge of the shell. Now, for the rest of the turtle shell, you have bigger shapes. And again, these are not um, perfect rectangles or squares, but I'm gonna make some sort of bigger kind of rectangular shapes. And I'm gonna try to fill those in with my crayon. Now, the turtle often has kind of a little bit more of a reddish brown on its shell, so if you wanna add a little orange or red to this, you could do that too. It doesn't have to be solid brown. And instead of using a pencil, I think it's faster to just color these in as you go. They don't have to be perfect. So don't worry about making any kind of perfect shapes. I'm gonna do that all the way across. until I get to that little turtle tail here and make a smaller shape there. Now we'll say that this is kind of the middle of the turtle shell. Well, these shapes would repeat on the other side, but we can't see all of them. So I'm just gonna do right up above it, show where that shape would go towards that side and sort of repeat the size of this shape, but just have it facing like it's going down the other side of the turtle shell. And I'm not gonna leave huge gaps in between my shapes. Okay, so I have the crayon done on the turtle. Um, at this point, you could use your crayons to add things um, like seaweed or plants. You could even add crabs or other fish around your turtle um, because when you paint on top of it with the watercolor, that crayon will resist the paint and they'll still show up. Now I'm gonna grab my paintbrush. Let's see what I did with it. Here it is. Um, I have a variety of paints sitting here today. I have some, like this is made from, this is just old coffee. No cream, no sugar, just plain coffee. Um, my yellow is some leftover Easter egg dye. My green and my blue are made from just soaking some um, old markers that weren't really working in some water. You could also use the pan watercolors like we use at school, um, or if you don't have any kind of paint or coffee available, you could always just use crayons or markers. Um, I'm gonna take my coffee and I'm gonna sort of add that light brown color to go around the turtle shell. Um, if you didn't have a brown, you could always use yellow. In this one, I just did everything yellow. I think either way is really fine. Now the turtle's skin, and all of this is skin and not shell, is more of a yellowish color. And I'm gonna just wipe my brush a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but I'm gonna paint this yellow. And if you wanted yours to not be quite such a bright yellow, you could just add a little more water and lighten it up. I'm okay with it being kind of bright. And get those little turtle feet.
Okay, so I have the turtle kind of filled in with color. So I'm going to maybe add a little bit of seaweed coming up from the bottom. Again, you could add other sea creatures to yours if you wanted to. And I'm just going to do some kind of irregular lines. They don't all need to be the same height. Give it a little bit of variety. Some tall, some short, some thick, some thin. Put a little bit across the bottom there too. And I'm painting on this little tray that I can just wash off when I'm finished. Um, so if you have an old newspaper or something you want to put down when you paint, that may be a good idea too. All right, and then around it, I'm just going to paint blue. Um, I have this that was made with some markers. You can add more water to make it lighter. As you paint near your turtle, it may help you to sort of slow down a little bit and kind of outline with your paintbrush what you're about to paint. That always helps me from accidentally painting on top of whatever it is I'm painting. So sort of outline what you're doing first and then you can have a little more time to just come in and fill in that color. All right, I'm gonna keep painting my turtle, um, but that's basically it. Again, if you wanted to add in more details with your crayons, you could add bubbles, you could add little fish, you could add anything you wanted really. Um, but I can't wait to see how your loggerhead sea turtle comes out.